We need a catchphrase. I have a catchphrase. I have one. Okay, go for it. Okay. Uh, we are always recording 24-7 all the time for but you. We're not. But we're not. Yes. I don't... No, Eric. Yes, we are. No, we're not, though. We're always recording 24-7, no. seven, seven days a week for we're you. Not allowed, we're not allowed to record when I'm For you, asleep. listener. For you. It's technically not allowed. You're not allowed to record while you're asleep. Why? Like just something that's part of the. Uh, I record rules. you when you sleep. What do you mean? No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, for the podcast. No, you don't though. <laughs> yes, I do. I'm making a comic a comic about your snoring. <laughs> I don't snore. Okay, sure. But we also don't record. When we're saying you're not allowed to record somebody while they're sleeping. Why not? We th- Is that a law? YouTube- that's, no, according to YouTube rules and like Twitch rules, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to have a, a record. Or you're not allowed to like have like a Twitch of yourself while you're asleep. Oh really? What do people yeah. do? Do they have like a second person from the hours like, of two to six? <laughs> uh, like they usually just don't do twenty four hours. They don't they'll do twenty. Okay. They'll, they'll stop. Well, we're doing twenty four hours because we're recording twenty four seven, seven days a not, week though, for you, you the listener. Sleeping. You don't record me while I'm sleeping though. There's actually a comic Twitch. I don't know how I ended up following it, but there's like comics explained and it is 24 mm-hmm. seven. He just replays other episodes of it. It's so boring. What was that guy doing? It's like he, he like takes comics like uh, obscure uh, Thor, you know, like story arcs. And he just like mm-hmm. talks about what happens in the comic. And it's like very droll. Has have you seen it? It's called no. Comics Explained. It's he's getting a free shout out, even though I'm kind of, you know, shitting on it a little bit. But never heard of it. But I mean, I have it on sometimes. So I mean, he has followers. So clearly, he's doing something right. He's, he's doing getting... something right because I, maybe it's just because there's moving pictures. The pictures are moving and there's talking, and mm-hmm. and that's enough these days to get me to watch something. Mm-hmm. How about like uh, for a catchphrase? It's like. We're we're talking and you're listening and that's enough. <laughs> but that's like saying like, dumb comic students. creators. We're talking, you're listening. That's enough. <laughs> we're D minus students, but we're not D minus students. Uh, aren't we? No, we're not. No, okay. No, we're not. So you've already nixed your original idea. You have gone to a second one. I like the I've second also... one better. No, no, I don't like either. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay, that's enough. That's that's enough. Okay, good call. Good that's talk. enough. You say that's enough, and people are like, "Cool, cool. What a great podcast." That's enough. Yeah. Next enough of next enough of the podcasting. We're done. That's all we do. That's enough. Yeah. We talk. You listen. That's enough. Okay. Speaking <laughs> of someone who talks and listens, we have a guest today. Wait, we we don't have a name. We we also have a name of a of a show too. I forgot about that. I'm okay. sorry. Yeah. I mean, last week I think I was like on this rant about how why do we even say our name and and who the hosts are? People are already clicking on our podcast and you already know the name of it. Like yeah, like there's no way to find this podcast without knowing what the name of this podcast is. No, Wrestling 101 is that you always uh introduce yourselves every single time just in case like you're like having to get somebody in the middle. So like if you ever listen to like some of the greatest talkers, yeah, of like all of like, uh, like all like wrestlers, like Enzo Amore, who's a who's a former wrestler, but was like just known for being a very good talker, but not being able to wrestle at all. He would always just introduce himself. He's uh, be like, he just says his name constantly. Yeah, he just says his name constantly. Yeah, he's like, he's like, I'm Enzo Amore. <laughs> And this is how he starts every sentence. I'm Enzo Amore. Get me a Coke. I'm Enzo Amore. Ooh, we have, we have Coke. somebody said Where's hello Coke? on Twitch. Hello. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm Eric Schwartz, and you are? Keegan Shiner. And together we are? Dumb comic creators. You got it. Yay. Yeah. You didn't do the stupid joke. What joke? Po- well, together we are? Podcast. Podcasting. No, you already said dumb comic creators. We're already good. Well, we are, we're both. We're both things. We're podcasting. We're dumb comic creators. Yep, we got it. We're good. Yep. I have to keep you guessing. Uh, uh, okay. okay, so today, let's just move on. This was just the worst <laughs> intro we've ever done. <laughs> well, Once yeah, again. So, 
because we're just doing the bare minimum for your request. Just enough. That's enough. Just enough. You know, enough. that's enough. Yeah. Uh, so today we have a guest, and his mm -hmm. name is Ben Macklin, and his book on Amazon is called How to Draw Bad, a Collection of Comics, and it came out this year in January. Mm -hmm. And Ben, uh, welcome to this podcast. Thank you for coming thank on you. our show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to talk about it, and it was great meeting you guys. It's so nice to meet you, too. Nice, yep, nice to meet you as well. Now, Ben, where are you living right now? I am living right now in Boston, Massachusetts. But Ben, what but... is your exact address? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> What's your social security number, your date of birth, and your credit card number? Also, give us the dictions in the back, too, just in case. Oh, uh, I never remember that stuff. Oh, okay, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. So, um, uh, where, where did you, how did you start doing, like, why, why... I don't know where to start. There's so many questions I have about sure. this. Eric, sure. why don't you start? Okay. Um, so what first inspired you to start just doing comics, period? Um, uh, clearly, like, a lot of the characters are – I just looking at you, looking at the <laughs> comics, a lot of the characters that are in it are you. Yes. Was that, like, just the inspiration? Absolutely, part? yes. You're like, I like how I look. I'm going to draw myself. And then... uh, I mean, maybe not there's like, a little... Not like, not like, so, not like, yeah. you know, like, pompous ass, like, oh, I'm so I mean, great. I mean, I might be a bit of a pompous ass, but there's, yeah, there's probably a bit of vanity to it, honestly, which I think is okay, you know, like, that I want to see myself in my comics. Uh, I've also been told before by people that they like the ones that I'm in more often because they find it relatable, which I find interesting that, like, somehow seeing me every time makes them feel like it, it means something to them. And maybe it's because it's this sort of, uh, I don't know, a character that they've come to know. Even if the character version of Ben in the comics is different in ways to the way I think, mm -hmm. um, it still feels like something that people can relate to. And I've started to realize like that is the continued thread of all my comics, even though there's really no overarching story, is that it's about me and, and how I'm feeling. Um, but so to answer your question from before about like how it started, I really only started drawing about a year, year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, and that was mainly because I had started studying comics in my undergraduate um, for my undergrad thesis. I wrote it about comics and then I got a master's in English where I was writing about comics there, too. And I got familiar with this person named Linda Berry, who you guys might be familiar with in her work um, as comics lovers. And in one of her most recent books, she basically gave this call to action, telling people to come back to drawing. Even if you're adults, it's never too late. Even if you're in your 60s, it's never too late. Start drawing again. And I decided to start doing it. Um, and at, there was a certain point last year where I was drawing a comic every day. Uh, it helped me deal with the challenges of grad school to kind of express how I was feeling. And then it uh, plus you were drawing in class, probably, right? Oh, so, there was definitely some of that yeah. too. Some of my favorites were drawn in class, actually. You get a lot of good stuff done in class in grad school. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's it's like the environment of thinking, like really gets your gears moving. I think that was really helpful for me. And I think the, uh, recently I haven't been able to draw as much, and I think it's because I'm I'm doing more routine stuff. So I, it might help me to, I don't know, try something new, watch some new TV shows, go somewhere new. I might get more ideas. But yeah, I think that matters. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember being in, in, in like the more lecture, I went, went to grad school too. And, uh, I remember in the more lecture based classes, my mind would like sort of just drift off and suddenly I'd be doodling and I, I don't really doodle in real life. Like outside of school, I'm not much of a doodler. I don't usually have a notebook. I'm not like absent minded enough to just like be doodling. But like, for some reason I would just I didn't do too well in those lecture classes, but uh, uh, yeah, but I got a lot of good doodling done. That's important. I think a good doodle is the start to a really good piece of art. Um, and I'm so proud of the pieces of mine that started as like a tiny little, um, usually it's like a post-it note. Some yeah. of my favorites, like maybe ones you might bring up will be ones that I can safely say, yeah, I actually have the post-it note on my fridge. Uh, and that's where it started. Wow, cool. So did Would you... you go uh, go ahead, Eric. You go. You go, okay, Eric. Did you go from paper to like computer, or were you like a lot of your stuff just on the computer only? I think that I decided I wanted to get into art, and I instantly bought myself a tablet because it just felt like that would be the more comfortable way for me. Especially at the beginning, what I was kind of really. Tablet? 
Um, so I don't use an iPad, which is very shocking to people. I use a, a Microsoft Pro Book. Okay. Um, and so I don't use Procreate or Adobe. I use Autodesk Sketchbook. It crashes on me constantly. Oh, my but God. I just, I've gotten to know it uh, so well. <laughs> so it just feels like it's almost like an extension of my hand now, this app that I've been using for a year and a half. It's weird. Hard to... Weird. Yeah. Okay. Constantly hitting the save button just in case. That, like... Oh, God, yeah. Oh, today I was working on something and it kept crashing. I was driving me crazy. But it's just it's my mess. So I just have to get used to it. Oh, cool. Um, so you, you, so you studied comics. Um, what did, what did you study about them? What, yes, so what was your thesis? My, yeah. Yes. So I got my undergrad thesis, uh, in English, sorry, my undergrad degree was all in English. And so for the thesis that I wrote, I wanted to pick a topic that I thought would interest me if I was going to be writing 40 pages about it for nine months. And out of everything I had read for my, my English degree, the ones that stuck with me most were the comic books. So I decided it was going to be about comics. I don't know which one. I don't know what, what topic. I just know it's got to be about comics. That's the only thing I could tolerate t writing about for 40 pages for nine months. And uh, and then I got familiar with this book called Sabrina, which came out in 2019. Um, and I wrote about that one. And the theme of the thesis was hope okay. because it is a miserably depressing book. And I felt <laughs> like crap after reading it. And I wanted to find a way to work through challenging texts and, and try to really come to an understanding of what do we get out of reading things that are so devastating. And so that theme of hope was really important to me. And I think that's also kind of a theme of my later comics when I started drawing Wait, later is, on. Wait, is that Sabrina the Teenage Witch? No, it's no. not. <laughs> it <laughs> Eric, you know? It's a uh, 2000 uh, book by Nick Donasio. Darnet, Dar yeah, Donasso. Donasso. Um, it's about uh, Sabrina. I'm Sabrina on the Wikipedia, so I'm not that smart. A woman named Sabrina goes missing in Chicago, leaving behind her sister Sandra and her boyfriend Teddy. A month later, a grieving Teddy stays with his childhood friend Calvin, an Air Force airman living in an isolated military base in Colorado. The recently divorced Calvin looks after Teddy, who's depressed, and spends most of his time lying in his bed in his underwear. Uh, and then a few days later, uh, a video Eric, of Sabrina's thrilled. Eric, I'm asleep. Blah, blah. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're, what you're rambling on about, but... Well, I'm, I'm assuming stuff stuff happens. Please, go, please, please let Ben who actually study sure. again. Well, so basically, like, it's a book about 2019 <laughs> in a lot of ways, um, which, you know, could have been a very challenging time for a lot of people. It's also a book about the social media world and, like, how it, like, intrudes upon our privacy and our, like, how, how it alienates people from each other. Okay. Um, and the other thing it's about is grief and loss because the uh, the titular character is killed and it's about the people that who were most affected by her death, basically, uh, both, you know, her family, her ex-boyfriend uh, and uh, and others who were indirectly affected. But I had actually lost my father uh, around the time that I had started this thesis. Oh. So that theme of hope and this devastating book that I was dealing with were very much intertwined with what I was experiencing. So it became about me trying to feel more hopeful in life after what I had just gone through while also reading about this book, which was so hopeless and trying to figure out, so how can I extract <laughs> hope out of this miserable story? And by the end of it, I, I think I came up with some things that were really helpful to sort of put into words. And that 40 page thesis was something that was really useful for me in a way. Yeah. And I think the best writing tends to come from that when you actually have a real problem you're trying to solve. Oh, cool. And what was your graduate thesis? Was it about <laughs> comics too? So I didn't actually have to do a thesis for my master's, okay. um, but I took several classes that were on comics or, you know, somewhat related to comics while I was there. And I certainly learned a lot, uh, but it was, it was generally a master's in English, not specifically in comics, oh, but okay. it was during that time. And during grad school, I started drawing a lot. And specifically, it was right around the time that COVID hit and I was stuck inside all day, every day. I spent about two or three hours a day drawing just because I needed something to fill that time. Oh, that's and cool. so that's that's really how the book happened was me just spending the days learning how to draw because I was so bored and miserable yeah. and alone. <laughs> and I'm sure like what we'll get into at some point is how the content of a lot of it is very much related to COVID or the feeling that that the isolation and the pandemic caused. That's so funny. Uh, you know, like the bubonic plague and stuff. And then what followed was the Renaissance, right, where there's just like all this art sure. and stuff we get it now right we yeah. can all just like completely get it everyone was creating last year yeah uh there was nothing else to do you can't go outside 
like yeah. do some art. That's that's great. Uh, so what's interesting to me is like you uh, you did this like very personal um, comic about like your really mediocre struggles, I guess. Like oh, that wasn't a comic. That was that was all uh, in writing. The thesis. No, no, no. I'm talking. I'm I'm switching back to your like, your bad in, in your bad drawing comic. Like, yeah. Oh, this one. It's like daily struggles. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I'm literally looking at getting work done with friends. 12 p.m. Progress zero p.m. 3 p.m. Zero percent. Yeah. Like that's a daily struggle. I'm sure most sure. people in the world go through is like literally just especially when you're doing something yourself and you're not necessarily on a deadline. You don't necessarily have to get up and go to do it. And yeah. that's just something you have to realize about yourself. So. Yeah. Oh no, you're right. Yeah, no, I thought you were referring to the thesis, but but. Oh this... no, sorry, I was switching yeah. gears away from the 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 hope. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, no, yeah. go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. So it's about. Um, yeah, I find it very interesting. Are, are you a writer too? Do you write other things, or is this just like kind of your first? You just study writing, or like. Yeah, I, I would I'm say. I'm interested in how you jumped yeah. from like studying literature into literature, or like, or like. Were you so, I yeah, I don't know. Just tell us yeah. about, like, the first day that you put a comic on Instagram, I guess. Sure. Well, the, yeah, that was a big moment um, for me. And because I had never really been one to use social media to kind of, like, show off things I was doing, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with showing off. It's really important, actually, in some ways, to, to feel confident enough to want to show off. Uh, maybe you could take it too far, but I think there's also <laughs> kind of a value in it. And I had never really seen that value or maybe it's because i was so self-conscious that i didn't want to share things i was doing in my life um so making that instagram page and then just putting up my very first comic kind of happened at the same time it started with just like a few things i had drawn over the last month i put them all up at once okay. and then i did my first real four panel comic which is the first page of this book how to draw bad um and it was really just how i was feeling that day it was sort of like a visual diary of what had been going on in my head and <laughs> i don't really like to, to sort of try to answer that other question at the same time i don't really use writing much as an outlet um i've written papers for my degrees mm -hmm. but i'm not someone who like publishes poetry or publishes like a blog or anything like that i have i like to play music like i have a few instruments over there so okay. I, I have creative outlets but it's never been something that i kind of publicly shared like this and um I was kind of really instantly enamored with the idea of using images to express what I was thinking, because maybe it it was a language that communicated more immediately with people rather than me trying to like articulate everything and say exactly what I'm thinking. I could just kind of show it. Yeah. And And so like that first comic, I think, was I was always focused on my work my entire time in grad school. <laughs> and like I, I didn't have a life outside of just doing grad school for that whole first semester, semester and a half. And so I posed it as someone asked me the question, so what do you do in your free time? And I was trying to imagine like, what would I say to them? What do I do in my free time? Uh, does it count if I like working? <laughs> and that was, that was just how I was feeling that day. And somehow it came to me in this visual form and like, it just made more sense than trying to say that as a paragraph. And so then it became like the whole rest of the book is really how I felt that day. Maybe some of them are, aren't quite like this, but, but a lot of it is how I felt that day, just trying to explain it in an image rather than in words. Right. So it is a kind, it's a kind of a diary in a lot of ways, uh, the book. Uh, that's what I thought. Was a lot of them seem to be, they were like slice of life of just like how you were feeling that day, like your emotional <laughs> thing. I mean, sure. even free fall, I don't, I don't want to like project what you were feeling that okay. day, but I felt like you were having like a day where just kind of, you know, falling in you, like, yeah. it wasn't like a cry for help, but it's like, this is how I'm feeling, so. Yeah. No, absolutely, and uh, that's that's a great reading. You know, I, I believe in, like, there's no one right interpretation, and I also believe that it's great when people have different ideas um, of it. And then I definitely had something I was thinking with that one, which is, yeah, I was just, I kind of didn't know what I was doing. I felt like things were kind of slipping out of my control, and so I sort of tried to express it with me just falling through the air. And uh, there was something really special about that because not only was I able to explain how I was feeling, but I was also able to kind of insert myself into like this imaginary world where I was flying through the sky and all these colors around me and passing an airplane. And so I was able to sort of turn something which was a real like intense and, and somewhat painful feeling and turn it into something that could even be fun. 
you know, surrounded by these colors flying through the air. Yeah, so interesting. that was something that like, I tried to do with all of them was like to express something that could be heavy in a way that could also make it a little more fun and, and maybe approachable. So do you have an art background? Not at all. Like artistic, um, uh, like drawing or, or um, sketching? Did you doodle in high school? <laughs> I would say hardly, honestly. Um, okay. I've, I've always just like had a kind of like creative interest. Like I, I've been playing music for a very long time. I played drums since about first grade. Oh. Uh, I've been playing guitar since high school. Um, and I've always just drawn here and there when an opportunity showed up. So, and when that happened, I wasn't terrible, but I definitely didn't have the consistency that you could say, like I was an artist in any way, like, like some of the people I'm sure you've had on the show. Um, I really only started drawing consistency about c consistently about two years ago. Okay. And that's when it really became like a part of my identity where I can now say like, I am a person who draws as opposed to I have drawn before. Um, and that had a lot to do with like the stuff I had been studying and being surrounded by comics made me kind of just want to do it myself. So yeah, that's that's why I asked because um, like a little bit into this comic, uh, you you kind of do this abstract art, <laughs> and like uh, it it came out of nowhere basically because, um, you know, if you're reading along, it's kind of like oh, diary of Ben, you know, struggling, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like if comic. A, it's a comic if it's in boxes and it's just like abstract art in four panels and it's very high concept humor, you know? Um, and also like, I want to talk about the color you use in this whole, whole thing, but like, um, yeah, it's like crazy colors and everything too. So, uh, so how, how, why, why, what, <laughs> you know, <laughs> how did that happen? I think I just kind of, always had that kind of brain where like i just love this stuff i mean i think it's weirdly connected to music in some way okay um i i think a lot like in terms of music i try to imagine what i see in my head when i'm listening to music um what kind of music oh well i love classic rock i love okay. jazz okay. um and i also love the grateful dead and okay. that's just this kind of really intense jamming improvisational music and it just makes me think and go to all these wild places in my head um so i, I honestly can't figure out where it comes from some of the things that end up in my comics but i think i had this epiphany very early on when i had started drawing which was i so rarely have an idea of what i want to draw that if anything comes to me, I'll put it on the paper because I'm just so grateful to have an idea. It's just got to go straight onto the page. <laughs> so it was this sort of like freedom to just put down whatever I was thinking. And that day it was absolutely no content whatsoever <laughs> other than filling the squares with shapes. Okay. And, that's what it okay. and that's what that one really became. And so it was just shapes. The title came at the very end. Oh, at the I beginning, see. it was just here's some shapes. And finally, I said, huh, well, it's in boxes, so it's still a comic. And that became the title. <laughs> and then you did a bunch of them. Yeah. <laughs> then you did a yeah. whole series of those. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's um, very often it's just the first thing that comes to mind. And, and with a lot of them also, especially if there's a kind of random, you could say, abstract color scheme behind what, what's going on. Yeah. Sometimes I start with those first because I don't know what's going to go on the page. Okay. I just start with a bunch of colors and shapes that feel cool and right to me in the moments and then maybe when i'm done with that i look at how it makes me feel and i put a little ben on top of it saying something <laughs> right yeah then you 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 must have felt guilty because towards like further on in that series you start putting in figures <laughs> yes yeah. yes absolutely you, you definitely have like a change on that note like really because like if you look at your first off it's very much this is kind of just it's either like this is my day or this is how i'm feeling or Here's just, just kind of like this random thought. Where am I? And yeah. then all of a sudden you start getting into a lot of these, like, I, like not jokes, but just kind of like just different interpretations. Like empath. There's literally a path that has letter M's. Uh, there's the uh, the dice or the dice one, which I, just, I remember. The paradise. And then you're like, sorry for the lame pun. Yeah. You're like apologizing to the audience. Yeah. <laughs> so I can explain that part. And this is something that I definitely have some regrets about how I did the book, um, which I think is 
probably common for most people who have produced something like this to think, oh, I could have done it a little better. Um, I wish I had explained what that series was, uh, and I could do it now, but it doesn't make up for the fact that the book is still the way it is. So I had obviously started on Instagram with all of these. I had no intention of publishing this in a book format any at any time. It was just Instagram for my friends, people I had started meeting in the artist community on Instagram. Yeah. And there was a challenge that went up right around the start of COVID when everyone was stuck inside uh, at the start of the lockdown. It was called the Dreyfus Art Challenge. And it was this like famous Instagram artist named uh, Dreyfus Art. And they put up a list of 10 things. You should do one every day. And this really helped me get ideas for things to draw. Okay. And the first the first one, or you know, whichever order it came in, the first one was Flower Friends, and then Coffee Creature, and then Love Bug, Empath, Cowboy Cat. And so that, those were just my responses to that challenge. Um, and I wish I had explained that in here, but at the same time, it sort of felt like the whole book, even though it's a compilation, it's really a collection and there's no narrative, I think if there's one prevailing narrative to the whole thing, it's just me improving as an artist, or I'd like <laughs> to think so at least. And so even though I don't explain things and give commentary like, oh, so this is when I drew this one and I started out drawing like this, I hope that the reader gets a sense over time like, oh, like this, these are getting better. Because that's, that's the feeling I want people to walk away with is that by just doing the drawing, it will get better. So, Eric, I'm looking at Astral Adventures. And uh, where, where did you, like, did you learn color theory or uh, do, do you just play? Or, like, what do you, what do you, I, what do you, what's I your mean, background honor, in this? Or it's an are honor you just, to like, kind of fig figuring it out? Yeah. Yeah, it's an honor to hear the question because, no, I have absolutely no idea of what color theory is. Okay. Um, I just know the ones I like. Okay. Uh, I know that I like to see as many colors as possible. And one thing you'll definitely notice on my Instagram since the book is that I've gone even wilder with the colors because I just feel like I want more. Right. Um, and so, yeah, like Astral Adventures is one that I'm super proud of because it's just absolutely psychedelic and crazy with the color. Yeah. And um, yeah. I, it's just felt right. That's always been what kind of guided me to draw something was if it felt good. And also I there the you can see that you're, you've, you've inserted yourself into these things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that was also a sort of feeling of like being, it was sort of trying to express a feeling, but I couldn't quite say it. So I, I was just sort I of. I think the feeling was, uh, <laughs> I might've said that these were boxes and therefore a comic, but I don't mean it unless there's a figure. <laughs> yeah. That definitely became something is that I had to be in as many as possible. It was like, you got scared of that original <laughs> idea. Like, yeah. <laughs> No, I liked being in them because it was almost like I could tell I could transport to that world that I drew. And especially if I started really liking what I had drawn, I just wanted to be there with surrounded by all the colors. Now I am because I just I put my art up on the walls around me and it's sort of like I'm there. But oh, cool. but I think putting myself in the images was something that it sort of made me feel like I could escape my room, which I had been locked in for at that time, maybe a month or two. Yeah. And I could kind of be in this colorful little astral adventure. Do you paint? Do you do anything non digital? I, a little bit, um, mainly because I, I have so many friends who do a lot of that, um, okay. who they, they applaud like my ability to draw with the tablet, but their painting skills are unbelievable and I'm so jealous. Uh, but I just can't quite do it with the analog. I try my best, but I don't understand it. And I'm trying to learn slowly. It takes practice, I have a, yeah. Oh, I, just like everything, you know. So I have a few of those up around my apartment because those are easier to, to hang up because they're not on a computer. Okay. Um, but I, I can't say that it's something that I have much skill in yet. I'd love to get better at it, though. I'm just wondering. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, these are very painterly, is what they would say in the fine art world. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take it as a compliment. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, Eric, what else you got? Um, are you scared of clowns? <laughs> like, odd, odd question, but is it like? No, sure. But like you, like like the big thing like, that you were terrified of was not like the bug of a heart or like the whatever. It was clowns. So just curious. <laughs> yeah. So that one was uh, that was another random challenge that someone said, "Oh, draw a haunted carnival," um, and that was just what came into my head. Uh, I, you know, it's a shame because so many of my favorite comics I had ever drawn had copyrighted material in them so i couldn't include it in the book oh, okay. and in looking back i wish i had sent you guys some of those obviously to look at yourselves and but ultimately 
I feel like they weren't mine fully because it was like it was Pink things Floyd like song and, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so I have a lot on my Instagram is song lyrics that I try to convert to an image. Okay. Um, one that I'm especially proud of was being for the benefit of Mr. Kite by the Beatles, which was like this wild, fanciful circus show. And yeah, um, me and Keegan were in Lollapalooza and we saw, um, I'm blanking on his name. And Keith Paul McCartney. Yeah. Paul McCartney. Whoa. That was one of the songs he played. So. Oh, amazing. So it was, just, it was a fantastic song. Like, yeah. Everything. It's just, it's wild. That's another, that's another thing. Like, just like I try to create comics that make me feel the way some of my favorite pieces of art do, where it just takes you somewhere. And that song for sure, it just takes me to this, this fantastic world that I just want to be in. So I think it was around the same time as that, clown drawing that i had done the one about mr kite where it's just this wild circus show that i tried to draw um so the haunted carnival part was i was trying to make it scary i'm not very good at drawing scary everything i draw that's supposed to be scary comes out cutesy um which is a shame i don't know how to draw non-cutesy and i think that's because i have the drawing skills of <laughs> well i don't know what my style is i just feel like i draw like someone who only recently started drawing um well i think uh i disagree only because uh, it's pretty consistent, which like, people who start drawing, like Eric, don't know how to <laughs> stick. I, I, if, like, if you were to ask me to draw a picture of Batman one week and then ask me to draw a p different picture but a Batman as well, it would be Batman, but it wouldn't look the same. Yeah. Whereas you are able to consistently draw the same figure over and over again, which is a difficult thing. It's like skill. And Thank it's you. impressive. Thank you. I, I, I really appreciate that because I don't even feel that way about my own. Yeah, I, I'm glad it comes across that way. And I, I certainly think I've gotten better at drawing the little Ben character consistently. Yeah. But also one thing that I think happens with my attitude about drawing was that I, I got fixated on this thing that maybe is a negative where I felt like I refuse to draw and publish something that isn't the best thing I've ever drawn which is a very high lofty ambition. And for the most part, the things that have come out in this book and things that I'm publishing regularly on Instagram have been that where I felt like this is the very best I can do with my ability right now. But I mean, I, I'm going to, I'm going to squash your ego just a little bit there. Like, sure. like you set the bar very low. Let's be honest. Like, <laughs> like the best drawing you've ever done compared to like the first comic on this is, it's good. It's absolutely, very easy right. to do. You just add yes. one thing, like a triangle, and then absolutely. Oh my well, god, this great is so good. <laughs> well, that's what's great about starting out so bad is that you only have room to improve. Uh, let's let's transition to talking about the title of this book, sure. "How to Draw Bad," and it's also your Instagram is Ben Draws Bad at Ben Draws yes. Bad. Like, <laughs> why uh, the yeah. self deprecation and like. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, yeah. it's a, it's a it's, Jewish humor thing. Is what it's I'm sort of something that we do ourselves. So sure. I, I'd love to hear your thoughts oh, on dumb it. Dumb comics creators, no way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I uh, can totally relate. It's it's actually it's not a good thing to be dumb, you know. And uh, <laughs> if you you wouldn't believe that, but uh, yeah. that's the truth. So we kind of have the same sure. sort of aesthetic, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tell us, like, why? Why? <laughs> Well, I think um... all my questions today are so stupid. They're just like, oh, why? What? Why? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Why? <laughs> well, it's great because like I'm also wondering the answers to some of these myself. Um, I think that the title Ben draws bad for my Instagram because that's where it all started. It was I, the book title on some level was me staying consistent with my brand. Yeah. Um, and saying you know how to draw bad because this is Ben draws bad, but there's more to it, and I can explain that soon. But. Ben Draws Bad as the Instagram was probably in some way because I genuinely didn't think my work was good. So it felt like owning that and saying it's bad so you get ready for bad drawings would sort of lower the pressure that I put on myself and also that I would expect others to put on me. Because if someone then types in the comments and said this is bad, I could say, yeah, I know. That's what you get at Ben uh, Draws Bad. Okay, okay. So I think, I think that was part of it kind of subconsciously. But there was another logic to it, which was... Again, this person whose writing really inspired me to start drawing, uh, Linda Berry, she poses this question in one of her books and also at a talk that I attended where she spoke, where she says, um, like, when does it 
stop being okay to call a child's drawing bad? Or, or when does it become okay to say, oh, this is bad? Would you talk to a four-year-old and say, sorry, this is bad, the stick figure you drew? <laughs> you know, or, and, and it can get really serious when you say, like, if someone's been through a horrible trauma yeah. and their drawings, like, don't look very nice, you know, is this bad? So it's sort of like, when does it become okay to scrutinize <laughs> someone's work and say it's good or bad? And, and that really stuck with me because I thought, yeah, just because I'm, you know, in my 20s when I'm drawing and putting it online, now it can be bad, whereas if it was... If I was five years old, it would be different. So I sort of felt like maybe I wanted to change the definition of what bad referred to. And instead of it being a qualifier of like of quality, it could just be a sort of aesthetic, like you kind of said uh, before, that maybe bad is just a style of art that right. I don't mind embracing. And maybe that changed over time. Maybe Ben draws okay now. But <laughs> no, Ben I, draws I bad. Of... Don't, don't. <laughs> yeah, Again, right. I'm going to just like squash that ego right yeah, back thank down. You. No, Ben. I appreciate it. No. <laughs> no. So, yeah. So I think it was like, like Ben draws bad. The thing that Ben draws is a thing called bad rather than that the drawings themselves are bad, if okay. that makes sense. Yeah, no, that, that makes plenty of that sense. Makes sense. But, but then the book title was a little different because that's something else is going on here, which is the how to part. And it's kind of confusing, I think, because this is when Amazon, you know, first published it, it was actually in the how to draw section of books, which it really is not. This is not a guide about how to draw in the sense of it doesn't show you like yeah, here's how to draw that. a figure and everything. And um, that's a shame because that sort of auto classification got it a little messed up. But the truth is that I think there is a sort of here's how to draw lesson in the book, which is the only way to draw is to just start drawing because that's that's how I learned. And it's basically, you know, here's how you get from point A, which is page one, to point B, which is the last page, where it, it gets noticeably better in quality. It actually um, does. Yeah, it does. Uh, thank you. <laughs> but it, there's no way anyone would be like, what a great pot that looks like a, a stove <laughs> pot for sure. It, it, it's missing. Like there's no, uh, there's no depth. There's no, yes, you know, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So it's definitely still drawing bad, but like purposefully yeah. to your point. And yeah, um, and it, it became my style. I think yeah. um, the sort of badness of it. Uh, there's also like, th there's other logic to why my style became the way it is when I was getting a little better at drawing. There was something I really, certain things I really liked that I wanted to keep doing. Um, which I could get into later, but but it's basically to say like that what? the title how Oh well one thing I love is having a background that is just totally in another world from the material in the foreground. Okay. Um, which is something like you might notice in some of the later stuff where it seems like what's going on in the in the background is like completely on a separate plane and totally disconnected yeah. from what's in front of it. And and this was actually something that I think was inspired by a TV show called Chowder. Okay. If you're familiar with this show. I'm familiar with the show. So they used to have their characters walk around on top of fabric materials that would not move, even though the characters would be moving. Oh, okay. And, and it was really amazing to me, and it's something that's always stuck with me and I've always <laughs> loved, was this idea of having like the background be totally removed from mm -hmm. the, the material on top of it. And it's just something I've always loved. I, I work digitally almost exclusively, so I really like to play around with the layers and what I'm able to do with those layers. And I just, I can't stop. I'm addicted to this feeling of, of creating a wild, spacey, colorful scheme behind the content in front of it. Yeah. So my it's... characters tend to just float in the middle of nowhere. I think it's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, and definitely different than anything I've seen uh, Thank you. in the, in the style of like personal, <laughs> personal diary comic, you know? Sure. Which there are a lot of, and it's a great, it's a great, um, I think it's like a great thing. It like, to your point, like people were watching you or, or like want you in the comic because they relate to that character because they have the same feelings about coffee and waking up or not doing anything sure. when they're working with people. And, you know, it's like, yeah, it's very relatable content, right? But, sure. uh, but you definitely have your own style. And like bad, bad is relative because it's a good comic. Sure. Yeah, you know what I Thank mean. You. Like okay, yeah, ego inflates, ego inflates. <laughs> I appreciate okay. it. Just to squash it later, I'm sure you'll get me. Well, no. not intentionally. It's only when when your ego like jumps out. Oh, That's okay. when I. It's like whack a mole, whack an ego. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. I see. It's okay to be humble, but it's, it's it's okay to be proud of your own work. Sure. It's yeah. not okay to not listen to criticism or not listen sure. to anything yeah. you think you're so great um he can at this yeah. well, he can, I, I guarantee you yeah. he can after this like we do this interview he's like all right eric this is where you sucked i'll be like this is where you sucked because 
like I mean, we so, like we try to be the best. Like as you put, we try to do the best interview we can. We do our research. We think of questions beforehand, and we may be dumb comic creators, but we still are interested in what yeah. you have to offer and what you have to ask. But I, we're not going to do it. Um, Purple Rain, a uh, Prince was notorious that like after every single concert, he wouldn't go out and party. They would literally go back to the hotel and watch a recording of their own con- <laughs> concert to try to improve. Like, all right, this is where I need to work on. This is where you need to work on. And so Prince is unarguably one of the best musicians of all time, but yet he still is like, I need to know I can improve. I need. But then, I, so. then again, he didn't name his band Bad Band. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like sucky music and going on stage and like doing some good music. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh it's meta you know it's like uh <laughs> well, I mean, it I would gives say, us like... the ability to make mistakes <laughs> but you know too it's like you'd have to eventually go back like all right uh ben you really were keeping the beat for a while there we got to talk about that you got you're a drummer you should know how to not keep the beat <laughs> you've been doing it what since first grade come on ben keep S- up the good work sucky music band name for any of our listeners who want to roll, roll with that yeah sucky yeah. music uh, <laughs> you need somebody to keep a beat. I don't well, you know, know, I think, I think, like on that point, you know, if I could change my my brand now, maybe I would. Oh, ooh, <laughs> but, controversy. But it's, just like it, but it's so <laughs> kind of synonymous with like what I've done. I mean, I, I'm really proud of like the size of my Instagram following. I'm proud of the fact that there are a lot of people who don't know my name, but they know me as Ben Draws Bad, like in that community, wow. and uh, and that matters to me. So. I might stick with it, even though at this point I would probably safely say it's not bad. It might not be phenomenal, but it's not bad. Uh, but I, it's even not a bad I'm, comic. Again, I'm not they, saying it's yeah, a bad comic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But Ben, you draw, draw bad. Better. You do draw bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I was thinking of the second book. I might call it How to Draw Batter. Yeah. Um, just to like stick with the the theme, you know. So, but <laughs> I, what I would also say is that even though there are things in this book that I wish I had done differently, and definitely things in it where my drawing skills have improved and you know i oh i wish i could redo that drawing at the same time this is probably the thing in my life i'm most proud of making was oh, cool. this book interesting and uh and that that matters to me a lot because the amount of time and effort into every single one of these pages you know I, i'm proud of the fact that a comic that someone will take 30 seconds at most to read takes me three or four hours to draw like i'm really proud of that because every single page of this is extremely dense with my labor <laughs> and a labor of love, really. You know, right. that is something I, I enjoyed doing that helped me just to make it. It's fascinating. Um, yeah. So you're so not alone in that. Down, like, there's yeah. so many different Instagram artists that have the same feeling on that. Yeah. It's just like, uh, it's very interesting to me. Yeah. But and, and so, if you, you know, stretch I, out that 30 seconds to how many followers you have and multiply right. it, right, then it's about sure. the same amount of time, I guess. So. <laughs> And so it's like I could be down on it and down about things and say, yeah, it's bad and all that. But at the end of the day, even if it is bad or not, I'm still super proud of what I'm doing, you know, and I'm still going to keep doing it. And as far as the criticism also, like that's that's the way it works. If you want to be good, you have to be ready to improve. Right. Yeah. And that's that's what the book is about in a lot of ways. It's like handling that that pain that comes with thinking you're not good enough, but then also kind of using it creatively. Um, which I tried to do as much as possible. So certainly I'm, I know there's going to be a review of the material and I'm excited to hear about what you liked and also what <laughs> I can do better because it helps in um, every way. We, we want to know, um, I'm using the Royal we, I don't know about Eric, sure. but uh, <laughs> I did want to know like what prompted you to make this a book? Yeah. Um, I think the most important part of it to me was that I had spent so many years reading these comics and putting them on my shelf and I wanted to sit on that shelf with them. Okay. And so the most important thing wasn't that other people would get the book. It was that I could have a book of my own work. Oh, cool. Um, something in print that I could hold in my hands and put up and hang up on my wall, which I do with my book. Because, again, like I take a lot of pride in it. It's kind of cool, um, and, like, becoming part of the zeitgeist, right? Yeah. Like, you, you spend so much time sure. studying uh, comics and studying literature, and then suddenly you're part of it. Is that yeah? And you know, did I use Zeitgeist okay. right there? I don't know. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Have you ever yes. read the book um, Freak the Mighty? No. Who's that? It, it's uh, it's a book based on the so there's a film that was made called The Mighty, which is um, like just it's a fictional story, but the story uh, ends with um, pretty much the character he spent all his time with this this guy that became his best friend reading books, and he decided that like. If he could read all these books because of his best friend, maybe he could write a book 
with him and his best friends. And kind of like how I got your story was that like you studied all these books, you read all these books, you read all these comics. You like, and the way comics become your friends, like even though like you know what I mean, you yeah. know, they're not, you know, they're like fictional characters. You're like, well, if I can do this, if I spend all this time with them, maybe it's time I physically join them in a way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think there was just this craving to be more involved in what I was reading so much, which I think is normal. You know, if you listen to enough music, you're going to want to play some music, I think. Maybe that's the feeling most people get. There aren't a lot of musicians who hate listening to music, I would say. Um, <laughs> maybe they're out there. I don't know. But <laughs> no, I just, it reminds me of the Stephen Colbert sketch where he uh, was the waiter who hated food, so he always played with his stick. <laughs> and whenever I said, someone says something like that, I always think, like, and we got the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it, yeah there was it was definitely that feeling of like wanting to just get more involved I, I think it's kind of similar to what happened to me with music which was very often when i heard a song i would think like oh i want to do that i don't want to just hear someone else do it i want to do it and that's that would get me like wanting to look up how to play a song on guitar and at first it got me wanting to play guitar and eventually like that's how i learned all these songs is i would hear it and i would say i want to be able to do that oh, cool. and that's sort of I, I can't draw like the people on my shelf but at least i can put my book next to them and yeah. i can say like i i devoted the amount of time that i can be proud of and and call it a book and and also i eventually became proud of the quality of it and i thought this deserves to be on a coffee table somewhere and and i have really supportive friends who who bought the book and they put it on their coffee table and they really enjoyed it so you know the sales figures aren't anything like these other people on my shelf but they're numbers that i'm really proud of because it tells me this many people bothered to support me because yeah. they knew it, yeah. it was important to me. and i think a lot of them also thought it was okay yeah. Or pretty good even, and I'm proud of that too. Oh, very good. Yeah. I'll throw a very good out there. Thank Inflate you. that ego. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I squashed it twice. I inflated it twice. It's back to normal. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh <laughs> cool. Uh yeah, because I, I guess printing is not something that some people are like feel they're um allowed to do or like they don't allow themselves to be like have that kind of success or you know what I mean? Like it's harder to like um move into printing you know like am i good enough for a printing you know yeah. uh so yeah i just wanted to hear your thoughts on that it was yeah yeah well i'd say one thing that i sort of regret is that because it felt like i needed to be of a certain quality to print these i did go back and i changed some of my older comics and just in ways that try to brighten them up and try to like recolor some things that were older so my first comics in the book, for example, didn't used to have colored backgrounds oh, when okay. they first were released on Instagram. That's just like one example of how they've changed. Wait, um, wait. So do you think that's good or bad? Because looking back, I'm a little bit on I'm very ambivalent about how I feel on that, because I think that on the one hand, I think the people buying my book deserve the best quality book they can get. Yeah. But on the other hand, I feel like the message of the book was the the feeling of improvement and the feeling of this is the way they were when I first started. And here's how they got better later on. And I yeah. sort of wonder if maybe I shouldn't have changed them. So I'm not sure where I stand on that. The book is the way it is, and it's not changing. But that's something <laughs> I still think about. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, that's something interesting. There are definitely some that I think look way better now than they did when I first made them. Um, just because of those like color changes. You know, when I was turning it into a book book, I went back. And any of the ones I could change, I, you know, I tried to zhuzh them up a bit. I, but especially with those early ones, I feel like maybe there's something missing because I changed it a little bit. I, I, you know, I wouldn't say so. I think it's more consistent because you did, you yeah. know. Um, but. And I think that matters too. And at the end of the day, you know, if I'm going to be charging people money for this book, which by the way, I make almost no profit on them. They're very expensive to print. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so people, people wonder why it's so expensive. It's because it costs almost that much just to print them because it's a lot of color. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. Bro the, book printing, you make no money. Yeah, you you actually yeah. lose money. Yeah. Yes, I did. For the most part. The, the, the big spiel everyone says, if you want to make money, you don't make money from the books. You make money from the merchandising. So mm. start merchandising figures of yourself. And oh, that's <laughs> an idea. Sure. I'd love that. <laughs> That'd be fun. You could sell posters of some of this abstract stuff, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't totally consider that. Thanks. One thing I even thought of, and I've actually done this with one of my older copies, is I just ripped off the spine and pulled out all the pages individually, and I started hanging them up in my place because they're these big, like, full-color images that I'm pretty proud of the way they look, and that could cover a lot of wall space for yeah. $20. So. Oh, for sure. <laughs> That's an option, too. Cool. Uh, Eric, what else you got? I'm pretty much 
Not that much. I pretty much <laughs> at the end. Okay, me too. Uh, it. Anything else you want to talk about? Like, do you have any future projects that yeah. you want to, like, artwork wise, like sure. Instagram or like, like that? Yeah. Well, I would say um, I'm definitely thinking about if I would make another one. I mean, it, it's not tremendously difficult now that I've done it once to know how to do it again if I was ready to. And maybe what's slowed me down as far as making new comics lately has been the feeling of this needs to be good enough for my second book, which is oh, yeah. a challenge. Weird. That I think you know, <laughs> a, a lot of artists, I'm sure, go through that when they feel like there's an audience to think, oh, I have to keep giving them something that they'll want rather than just drawing for the sake of the drawing, which is what it originally started as. Um, but I have thought about compiling my next hundred best comics into the sequel, maybe how to draw batter if I go with that title. But the other thing like long-term with the drawing is I would love to eventually draw a children's book oh, or cool. a children's book series. And um, first I got to learn more about that. Cause that really is a whole field of creating in itself. It's not just, Oh, I can draw so I can draw a children's book. I was once a child. So I know how to draw them. Like there's a real logic and, and craft to it. But I'd love to learn that because um, nah, there's not. Let's just go out <laughs> on easy. a limb and just say those people put no thought into it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. No, so uh, this that's isn't a I, children's I, book podcast. Uh, this is a comic book podcast. Uh, yeah, so we can say whatever me, yeah. we want. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's definitely true. But you you have said whatever you wanted so far, and it's been it's been just awesome. kidding. No, just kidding. Uh, yeah, I've been reading a lot of children's books really? to my son, and it's really. Uh, they're very interesting and well done. And I'm like, yeah. whoa, this would be there, cool to do. I agree with you. Yeah. There, there a lot are of so them are like just concepts you are so simple that you don't think you'd ever think of it. But then you, you just read like, that's a good idea. Wow. <laughs> three goats and they want to cross a bridge. What the heck? You know, <laughs> what there the are some that I think are really wise too. Things that are maybe marketed to children, even if they're ultimately also read by adults like Calvin and Hobbes. I mean, that's, yeah. it's so smart even though it's something that I read when I was a kid and I don't know a lot of people my age who are reading it now, but I go, I went back through them. I actually wrote a paper about Calvin and Hobbes comics. Like when I was doing my masters and it's, it's brilliant. And it's about fate and, and choice and life and death. It's incredible. And, and it makes me think like, how amazing would it be to be able to sort of help someone who's very young access those kinds of feelings in a way that, <laughs> That helps guide them through it. It's just something that really interests me. And I feel like looking at my comics now, I feel like I've started to learn how to do that just a bit, to kind of access these complicated ideas in a way that's sort of approachable and simple. And it's something I would love to get better at because I feel like I could maybe also be helping people with my comics um, yeah. if I'm not already. So that's something I'd love to learn how to do later. But that's a sort of lofty, long-term ambition. Cool. Yeah, that's great. Uh, well, good luck. And Thank you. keep keep Thank working. You. And if you get to a uh, book two, we hope that you'll come back. I'd love to do that. Thank you guys so much for having me on the show. It's been really fun. Thank I really you. appreciate the chance. Thank you. Thank you.